we good, guys? Uh, let's roll cameras. Roll sound. Okay. Okay. One of the founders of NBC News, Reuben Frank, defined television news as the transmission of experience. It's unique in its ability to do that, and we want to share with everyone your ability to transmit the experience of what it was like to be in the middle of this disaster. Here is the very latest for you tonight. There are now more than 22,000 National Guard troops in the four states affected by this storm. Half of those troops are here in Louisiana, where tens of thousands of survivors, mind you, are still trapped. There is no food, no water, no relief, and there is great and growing anger. My mother suffers from congestion heart failure. Her eyes are so gross in there. I need to get her out of here. This woman's over 100 years old, sitting in the heat and the chaos. There are people here who barely seem alive, even children. Look how hot he is. He's not waking up very easy. Some have already died waiting to be saved, with just notes for next of kin. As National Guard, the police won't even stop and talk to nobody. Looted alcohol, heat and frustration send tempers flaring, and with no police here, they have to settle disputes themselves. Finally, when an officer does appear, he only honks his horn to clear a path. Can you do anything to help these people? We have people coming to help you. Sir. Who's coming? As far as Cindy Davis knows, she's the only nurse here, trying to treat a girl in diabetic shock while comforting her frantic family. She manages to find a way to test her blood, only to find she needs something else. We have regular insulin! But amazingly, insulin appears, and a life is saved for now. Congress has now approved more than $10 billion in hurricane relief money. All that's required now is the president's signature when he returns to Washington. For most of you, this will be an hour-long special broadcast again tonight. For all of you, again tonight, our team is fanned out across this awful region. There were other uh, traditional media outlets there as well. Katrina happens again. The airwaves would be flooded with digital presence. Everybody would be tweeting right. from the convention center. Everybody would have their own uh, video that they would be putting out there. Would that diminish the kind of work that you were doing, the seriousness of it, keeping track of what was important and what the country really needed to know. Perhaps, but I'll bet you if this had happened in the Twitter era, we might have gotten some help faster. What, it makes me angry to watch it all over again. You and I have been in uh, war zones where we have watched a Black Hawk helicopter on the orders of a full bird colonel drop pallets of water and MREs on a dime on a half hour's notice because some terrific tricked out sergeant major ordered it to happen. And the fact that these people didn't qualify somehow for our help um, it just enraged me at the time. It still gets to me. If this ever happens again, I worry about our society's uh, cohesion, our ability to hold it together. So. I'll take a middle ground and I'll say that in a world with Twitter and as active a web as we have today as opposed to its baby steps back then, maybe the government would have been a little more responsive. Let's assume people would have joined us in the evening to see the video version of what was going on and perhaps to see it through our eyes. But maybe social media would have really caused a, uh, a, a social move to get our government to move, because that's, that's governmental malpractice.